snack break in Dunny Do. Travel Buddy Pies winning. <laughs> she likes them. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm starting this journey differently to usual. I'm already out here. Today, we've woken up at the Mid-State Caravan Park. We're in Dubbo, in central western New South Wales. That is our accommodation for this trip. We've got another night here, and then we're heading out into the outback further. So, just a quick, very quick look at the caravan park. That's not huge. I haven't decided whether I should do any kind of spotlight. I wouldn't call them spotlights, so just a little walk around caravan parks. Maybe I will. Anyhow, it's about four degrees maybe five and uh, I'm gonna do some brekkie I'm not gonna show you us cooking brekkie because everybody does that so we'll uh, go and have some brekkie today we're going to the Western Plains Zoo so we'll show you what we can around there and uh, that will be that here's Kaz Lovely 40 degrees this morning. Yep. <laughs> it's cool. It's a bit cold. <laughs> it is. Alright guys, we will show you more during the course of the day and of course over the rest of this trip. And we'll take you a walk around the camper a little bit later on. Cheers. Well we've made it to the Western Plains Taronga Zoo. And anybody who watched on our Kosciuszko adventure is well aware we went to the Canberra Zoo and the Kaz likes going to zoos. Yeah, Western Plains Zoo you can drive around in your own car which is kind of cool. You can hire golf carts, ride bikes, you can bring your own bike in your own golf cart. You can travel in any of those ways and of course you can walk around it. All of these things can be done. Now it's only just after opening so we have arrived with pretty well everybody but I'm sure we'll all spread out as the days go on so, I don't know how we're going to go seeing them joys of animals of course is you never know if they're going to turn up so what are we here for Kaz? The African wild dogs. African wild dogs. And if you look all oh, there's the... some way down there in the distance, isn't there? Yeah, there's some down all the way down there in the distance, sitting in the sun, enjoying the sun. Uh huh. In the back corner. So they are going to be very difficult to see on a GoPro, guys. We can see them. But they are quite a way away. I don't think I can zoom up far enough for you. But I'm sure we'll get closer to other things as the day goes on. A few hippos up there in the background. No, they're not me naked. They really are not. We've come to where the meerkats live. There they are. Now one of the cool things about this zoo is you get an app and you can trigger that app when you're at the exhibit and that's Kaz listening to the app right there and watching one of the keepers doing a talk. That happens everywhere around the zoo. We're going to move on down to where the black rhinos are. But there's one. And then next to her is her latest edition. So Savi, she's she four months and a couple of days time on the 24th. So we estimate her to be about 160 kilos now. When she was first born she was only about the 40 to 50 kilogram mark. 
And she's grown quite consistently with what a baby black rhino should. Sorry about my mic troubles, guys. We'll see how we go. I'll just stay very still. Okay. <laughs> um, so she, we expect her to put on about a kilo every single day for the first year of her life. So by the time she has her first birthday, she'll be about 400 kilograms. But that's nothing compared to mine. There's the white rhino having a feed. So we're not going to see her far away from that spot. But compared to the black rhino earlier, these things are huge. I mean, they're big. They're bigger than my ego. That's big. Zebra power. Obviously, they've earned their stripes. Or pyramid, or as I like to refer to it, Rhino Facebook. Now here comes Kindu, everybody. Now if he comes over a little bit closer, please don't reach out to pat him. He does sometimes like to lick the bus. We are essentially a giraffe lollipop right now. <laughs> they like the cool metal on their tongue, we think. Now can we see those giraffe walking out the back there? Yeah. Those two giraffe leading the charge, that is Zabiri and Kibo, and that big fella out the back there, the darker one, that's their dad. And he's telling them to go away. Look at him, he's go away, it's my food. Whack! <laughs> Rains, it becomes slightly malleable, so a little bit squishy. And what rhinos do is actually sharpen and shape their horn the same way that we cut our hair. They like to style it a little bit. So. As I drive up here, guys, there is a rock out here to the right-hand side where you can see Winston and Humphrey have sharpened their horns. There's also a baby bunny by the look of it. Now, giraffe can be anywhere from six to seven meters in height. Very tall. They can have 200 spots on their whole body. Very impressive. Now, guys, if you look through the cab, we've got five in front of us at the moment. Now, I'm just gonna give them a moment to sort themselves out. So bear with me. But Unami, if you could keep your children in line, that would be great. Uh, so this, <laughs> here comes Kibo, everybody. He's gonna start licking my bus. Um, so again, make sure we keep our arms and legs inside the truck at all times. Here he comes. Make sure we get our photos. Um, excuse me, can you not lick the truck? That would be great. Like I said, giraffe lollipop, folks. So he contributed time and time again <laughs> to the breeding program. Really doting husband, couldn't care less about the kids though. All right, now then. The second largest antelope in Africa, folks. Someone said it earlier today already. This is the Eland. Are they beautiful? Having their morning snooze. So Eland can be anywhere from up to a thousand kilos. They can actually clear a two meter fence at a standstill as well. So they can almost clear the top of this truck. Pretty impressive. Now, if we look at those horns there, we can tell the difference between boys and girls. Um, the boys have two swells in their horn, whereas the females can have three. They have a blue tongue, the same as giraffe, so that they don't get sunburnt while they're feeding all day, every day. Elephants. Not just for show. There's four in the closure. We found two. There's two more. Ah, oh, there's one out there in the distance. Fun to us. Yeah, <laughs> check out his ass, eh? Sumerian tiger. There he is. Yeah, putty, putty, putty.
though GoPros are not the greatest things in lay of light, but Dubbo's got a really pretty main street of a night, so I thought I'd give you a look at this. I haven't showed you much about Dubbo apart from the zoo, but it's just a really nice main street, just the, the lighting, the way the trees have got fairy lights and stuff in them, it's just really pretty. It looks particularly good of a night time, so I'm a bit of a light perv, basically, so well, I thought I'd give you a quick look at this. Because I just think it's really nice. Kind of reminds me of Tamworth a little bit. I think Dubbo might have more of this kind of stuff. Just very pretty. Day two, we're just driving out of the, I'll check the proper name of it, the Dubbo Mid-State Caravan Park. Now I didn't do a walk around the caravan park because I'm still a couple of years away from doing too many caravan parks, but it's a nice, uh, friendly, welcoming park that uh, has decent older but clean amenities. And it's got everything else you need for your caravans. I didn't look to see if there's a camp kitchen. But uh, it's a pretty reasonable park. And the best thing was it was probably the best price in Dubbo. So uh, it was 39 bucks for two of us a night. So it wasn't too bad at all. And we went on power because uh, Dubbo's the last major town we're going to be in for a while. So uh, we gave that a run. All right, uh, today is probably where the trip truly begins. Yesterday was the touristy thing as we did the uh, zoo. Uh, today is where we start really heading for the outback, so we'll take you along with us. Whether it's a caravan or a camper trailer yet. Anyway, it's towing well. First couple of nights sleeping in it have been good. Everything's pretty comfortable so far. Right, we've made it to Coba. I think everybody comes to this spot just because it's such a big thing. So Pretty impressive, big K-bar sign on what looks like a an old mine digging. Let's see if I can find some history about this somewhere. But, uh, it's pretty impressive. Everybody stops here. It's also a rest area where you can camp. 
overnight just in there called the Cornish Rest Area. I will go for a quick look over there to see if there's any signage. But uh, this is where we are at the present, Kobar. We've still got a few hundred k's to go today. So we won't be hanging around for too long. And yes, she's here. Look, there she is. She's very busy catching stills. I can't see if I've seen any writing about this over in the... Okay, well I haven't seen, found a sign or any info. But the big Cobar sign is at a place called the Cornish Rest Area. I may have mentioned that. Doesn't say how long you can stay here for. There is flushing toilets over there. And some tables bit of cover and as you can see it's large enough to handle a reasonable amount of campers so if I find out the rest of the info on that stuff I'll put it up or voice over it in something like that anyway We'll continue our way, still got a few hundred k's to go today, but KBR is pretty well getting very close to the start of the real outback portion of our trip. All right, we'll see you out there. Well, we've been on the road uh, I don't know, nearly three hours since we left Dubbo. We did have a very quick breakfast stop at uh, Ningen. And, uh, with the exception of these few trees that you can see, this is pretty well what it looks like out here. Just a bit of bitumen, not much else. Big open sky country. If it wasn't for the trees, it would be pretty, pretty damn desolate looking. But that's what you get out back in New South Wales while you're on the bitumen. So I haven't been able to film very much because realistically you guys don't really want to be looking at too much tar and stuff. So I guess we'll be showing you more of the good stuff when there's more good stuff to show you. And for Les, we'll see what we see. We're heading towards Gundabooka National Park. As you can see, about to hit the dirt. So we decided to uh, deflate the tyres. Best way to do it. Make it easier ride on the truck and the and the van. Or is it a camper trailer? We haven't decided yet. It's hard to say. Even the owners of it call it a van. Really a camper trailer. Beautiful day. Can ask for a better one. Even though this is good dirt, I think it's 
think it's still better for the car and the trailer to have softer tyres. Because that's how you make corrugations after all. They're going in too hard and chopping everything up. I'm loving this in this lake compared to when I used to just have to squat down or drop the tyres down because it's doing two at a time and I'm standing up comfortable. Winning. What would be the magical number there, Steve? I was thinking 26 in the front and 28 or 29 in the back. That's where the weight is. Probably low enough for these kind of roads. While he's doing that, give a little walk around. Truck's handling it beautifully. No dramas with the truck. The camper trailer's doing well itself. As you can see, it's got nice high clearance. Got 33s on the tyre. This should be fun. Is that firewood already? This will be our first night away from civilization. I'll test her out. far from where we drop the tyres after the entrance of the park is the information boards that tell you all about everything to do with Gundabooka National Park and there's a lot of reading so I'm not going to read all that out to you guys to be honest um, but I've got a few activities there's some Aboriginal rock art if you could bring bikes you can just go cycling, bird watching. So uh, there's a walk to the summit, there's a walk to the Aboriginal art. It shows you uh, where the couple of campgrounds are. I'll tell you this big bit here. Gundabooka National Park and State Conservation Area is a place of impressive outback landscapes. Has a rich tapestry of ecological and human history. The area has a great cultural significance to the Nemba people, or Nemba and Bakanji Aboriginal people. Sorry if I got that wrong. Allied to its spiritual importance, the area around the Gundabooka Range has provided a range of natural water supply and food sources. Certain places in the range were also used. There's venues for large ceremonial gatherings, including other tribes who came to the area from as far away as known as Broken Hill. Please respect the wishes of the traditional people by protecting their cultural heritage sites and special places. So it's obviously of major importance to the Aboriginal people. So do the right thing when you're in here and we'll be able to keep coming here for years. All right, we better get back into it. It's 2.30, it's dark at around five today. Shortest day of the year today. So we uh, better get a crack on. Dry 
tank. Yeah, dry tank. The road's not too bad. There's not many corrugations. A lot of stones, but it is stone country. Couple of hikers. Try not to dust them out. Okay, we have found camp at Gundabooka. So I'll give you a quick look at where we've camped. Just in these little bush areas here. There's a heap of them. I'll tell you about that in a separate clip. But we've just chosen to park here. Now for a first bush camp set up with the trailer, I've found it really fast to set up. Well, we've had to disconnect it because our truck is tall enough that we can't have it level unless we sit it on ramps and I didn't really want to do that so I'll take it off now realistically I used to do that the ultimate a lot so not a lot of differences there anyway well, that's our yeah, camp for the night I don't think I'm going to bother putting the awning out there's even a little campfire if we want to use it so we'll have a look at that in due course it's not really about that it's honey do we need a cheese with water yeah, you can. cheese I might have another one. I don't want to drink it too much. <laughs> well, that's where we're going to leave this particular episode. Hope you enjoyed it so far. If you did, throw a like on it. If you're new here, consider subscribing. If you do, click the notification bell. You'll know when a new clip comes out every week. And to your old hands, as always, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch one of my clips. I really do appreciate the support, guys. And uh, we will no doubt catch up with you all on the next one. All the best, guys. Cheers from Steve and Kaz at Mud Ducks 4 Drive Touring.